Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, your beacon of headlights, your steward of Gundor, your genius billionaire playboy basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And please, if you like what you see, slash here, hit that like and subscribe button for every little bit helps in this YouTubing world. Chang Chi, issue number one, is written by pro writer Jane Yang. Seriously, if you have not checked out his Superman Smashes the Clan three issue story, then make that a priority. And drawn by artists Dyke Ron and Philip Tan. And this issue begins with a flashback during the Song Dynasty, a time where the Emperor of China had declared that all martial art practices are acts of sedition. Thereby, those affiliated are to receive the punishment of death. And that's exactly what's happening here, as the local governor sentences a group of five individuals to public execution. One of the prisoners, named Deadly Hammer, questions the logic as to why they even came out of hiding in the first place, if in the end they were to be killed regardless of committing a good deed. But Deadly Hammer is reminded by a fellow prisoner, who explains that their master's teachings are to place others before self. Now fortunately, this public display is immediately interrupted when the Sorcerer Brothers, aka Master Shang Tzu and Master Shang Zi, arrive for a mystical portal to save the deadly warriors, whom are then given back each their respected weapons. Master Zhu is then strangling the executioner by using his mystic powers, but Master Shi tells his older brother to stop, for the man has a family and was only but doing his job. And already we are shown that both Yu and Z are working towards the same goal. The means of achieving it, however, are vastly different. Once Master Zhu lets the executioner free, the governor is shocked to see if the rumors are true regarding an underground alliance between the mystic and the martial arts. Master Shi then asks the governor that when he first chose the site for his home, did he ever take into account the land's dragon lines? And the answer to that is a big no, as the mighty villainous dragon Fin Fang Foom emerges from the ground, angry that his land has been invaded. And it's here where both Master Zhu and Shi assemble their group, the Deadly Warriors, to defend the people against the dragon's rage. We are then given a historical monologue, which tells us the reader, that the deadly warriors would continue to serve the masters for many more years, protecting the realm of China as the Five Weapons Society. After the deaths of the original Five Weapons and Master Shi, Shang Tzu developed a longevity spell in order to continue guiding the society throughout the centuries, until years later when he was killed by the master of Kung Fu himself, Zhang Shu's own son, Chang Chi. Back in the present day, somewhere in London, a week before the lunar year, we see that the new incarnation of the deadly staff from the Five Weapons Society is recalling the group's history to his men in honor of Shang Tzu. However, this private gathering is interrupted by Sister Hammer, whom is dissatisfied that under the leadership of deadly staff, the society has become nothing more than a drug ring. Therefore, she's to issue a challenge, and the two weapons engage in mortal combat. Um, <laughs> After many panels showcasing the two fighting, Deadly Staff gets the upper hand on Hammer. But suddenly, the trap becomes the Trapper, as Hammer attacks Staff, causing his internal organs to become liquefied. However, as he lays dying, Staff reveals to Hammer that the torch of the Deadly Staff has been extinguished, but their father's spirit has chosen to ignite the hand. Taken as an insult, Hammer, with one final swing, crushes Deadly Staff's head. Ew. Fatality. Sister Hammer proclaims that she will accomplish what Master Zhang Zhu couldn't, and after destroying those questioning her command, the warriors of the Five Weapons Society pledge to their new supreme commander. We then change settings over to San Francisco Chinatown, where we see the master of Kung Fu himself, Chang Chi, busy wrapping up bait to go orders at Grandma Wang's bakery for all the customers, whom are preparing for the upcoming lunar year. After conquering the rush hour, Grandma Wang is quite impressed with Chang Chi's skills and his superhero muscles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Suddenly, a lovely woman walks into the shop, and immediately Chang is taken back by this woman's beauty. Plus, she has yet to point a deadly sort of weapon up in Chang's face. And that's always a plus in the superhero dating world. The girl introduces herself as Delilah, Grandma Wang's niece. As the two shake hands, Delilah recognizes Chang Chi as the spy from England, a hero for hire, as well as an Avenger. And so she wonders how did a superhero such as Chang himself end up working for a grandma? Chang clearly blushes as he responds, saying that about six weeks ago, he helped prevent a robbery. Therefore, Wang offered Chang one of her apartments in exchange for his help in the shop. And after Wang calls out to her niece, Delilah walks over to meet with her grandma. But like a sly devil, she leaves Chang her number on a small piece of paper. Let's go, Chang Chi! Afterwards, as Chang looks out beyond the distance, he catches a glimpse of a person running across the rooftops. But more importantly, this person, this mysterious individual, seems to be armed with a gun, which is a big no-no. Therefore, Chang is on the hunt after the roof-venturing assailant, 
Unfortunately, our hero is then taken by surprise, as it's revealed that the assailant is the beautiful British secret agent Lu Kui Wu. Lu Kui Wu. Probably butchered that name. I'm sorry, imaginary person. Who is an old time ally of Chang Chi's. But the two go way back, where occasionally they would team up to combat Chang's evil father, Shang Zhu. Back at Shang's apartment, Li Kui reveals as to why she traveled all this way to meet with him. She tells Shang that a couple of days ago, MI6 discovered some activity just outside of London, which they believe has something to do with Chang's father's organization. Li Kui goes on, informing Chang that members from the organization have tracked Chang down in an attempt to take him out, but Chang basically laughs it off. Nah, girl, you playing, but hold on to your butts, folks, because a group of armored ninjas immediately burst through Chang's window. Chang Chi busts out the moves, able to easily counter the attacks with some awesome kung fu action. And my god, it feels so good to see martial arts making a comeback. I digress. Amidst the fighting, two of the attackers declare a timeout as they demand Chang Chi to reveal himself as the true son of Shang Tzu. Shang's like, uh, yeah, duh. Do you not see how much of a badass mofo I am? As the two warriors realize that it is Chang Chi, they begin removing their uniforms, only for the remaining ninjas to question their motive. Surprise, suckas! They ain't on your side. After the two warriors kill off the remaining bad guys, they reveal their names to be Brother Saber and Sister Dagger, and refer to Shang as Brother Han. Shang is confused, for he has no idea as to why they are referring to him as Brother Han. Brother Saber explains to Shang that their father, Master Shang Xu's spirit, has chosen Shang as the supreme commander of the Five Weapon Society. And regardless of Shang having had killed their father, at the end of the day, they're family, and family always forgives. Therefore, Shang needs to return to his rightful place, and together, they can take down the unworthy commander before she enacts her villainous scheme. And as Sister Dagger translates, hurry up or we're all going to die a horrible, horrible death. But hold on everyone, let's not let's not be too hasty here. I mean, Christ on the bike. As Shang puts it, it was only just moments ago where these recently met family members, quote unquote, had just massacred a squad of deadly ninjas inside Shang's apartment. So please, forgive Shang's hesitance and his impolite manners at the moment. Not to mention that Li Kuei is still present and is MI6. Therefore, she can easily find cells for both Brother Saber and Sister Dagger. But suddenly, Sister Dagger throws a bunch of daggers to distract our heroes, which begin spewing smoke whilst they make their escape. And as they do so, Sister Dagger is like, fine, we'll do it ourselves. In addition, Dagger also mentions she can't wait to shove a dagger through Sister Hammer's stupid eye-shaped tattoo on her forehead. But look at the bright side, Dagger. At least it's not an ice cream cone. Womp womp. <laughs> but Shang realizes on who Dagger is referring to, for Shang informs Li Kuei that Sister Hammer and him grew up together, and that she was his mother's only other child, and Chang's first best friend. And all this time he thought her to be dead, but in truth, she has been trapped in his father's cult. It's here where Chang Chi realizes that he has to go back, because for Chang needs to return to save his younger sister, while simultaneously, Sister Hammer proclaims that she must kill her older brother, Chang Chi. Chang Chi issue number one was a fantastic action packed issue and a great start for Chang Chi newcomers who simply just want to get into the character and that of his world in order to prep for Marvel's Chang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, which looks and sounds dope. Shout out to actor Sume Lu, who's playing Chang Chi. What's up? Also, we're getting the real Mandarin. Thank God, because Iron Man 3 never happened in my mind. That's how I progress in life. Anyways, the book does a great job with going over its Chinese mysticism, as well as its depiction of everyday San Francisco Chinatown. Spoilers, I'm not Chinese nor Asian. However, my stepbrother and stepmother are. So it was really cool seeing in Chang's world, as well as in the flashbacks, we don't just see people speaking quote unquote Chinese, but rather various dialects, such as Mandarin and that of Cantonese, which was something I definitely appreciated. It made Chang's world relatable, and it added a much needed freshness. Real talk, it almost felt as if this was a whole new world that was being introduced to Marvel Comics. Well done, Gene. In addition to the comics atmosphere, there was also a good amount of levity with Shang-Chi and his supporting cast. Shout out to Sister Dagger, who's totally blunt with her comments. They're layered with dark comedy, which I very much appreciate. <laughs> and of course, the art was fantastic. Both artists, Dyke Ron and Philip Tan, did a magnificent job depicting the action set pieces, which made it quite engaging and precise for the reader's eyes. It wasn't just your typical Michael Bay explosions. The art was truly organized, and I wouldn't feel right if I didn't mention such specifics. Overall, I am 100% down for this miniseries, and therefore, my body is ready. And I'm excited to see where Chang Chi will end up and his long lost sister. Chang Chi, issue number one, gets a 9 out of 10. Giggity goo. Oh, right.